keeps you one step ahead. Jersey Central with Burt Barron on the new Talk Radio 1450 WCTC. It is 808. Welcome to hour number three of Jersey Central on the new Talk Radio 1450 WCTC, the voice of Central Jersey, 732-545-9282. Coming up, we'll do our need to know things. I'm going to have a special in-studio guest who will join me for the 8.30 half hour of the show as well, so stick around for that. Well, you might be surprised to learn that the number of students who ride a school bus powered by propane each day is about 1 million kids, and that includes school students here in Jersey as well. We're back to school, headed back to the classroom. Perfect time for parents to talk about uh, safety, school bus safety, which, of course, as you know, is a big priority here in Jersey. And joining me this morning on the Miller Lite Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline, he happens to be one of the top energy experts in the entire country, Tucker Perkins. He's the president and CEO for the Propane Education and Research Council, here to share some important information about why school districts are continuing to turn to propane to power their school buses. And uh, welcome uh, to uh, WCTC, uh, Mr. Perkins. Good to talk to you. Well, good morning, Bert. Glad to be with you today. Uh, As you heard me mention here, school safety and school bus safety is a big priority here in New Jersey. I'm sure you're familiar with a rather unfortunate uh, bus accident that happened in May here. A bunch of kids who were going to a class trip, uh, a day trip, uh, involved in a serious accident on an interstate highway. And unfortunately, some people were killed. And our governor just signed into law some new seatbelt laws. The three-point belts are now mandatory after like six months for every bus that's manufactured. So obviously, school safety and student safety is a priority here in New Jersey. But talk about what you do and how that lends itself to, to safety when it comes to school buses. Yes, well, you know, we focus so much on the emissions around uh, school buses and, and what children are exposed to every day. If you, if you think about that puff of black smoke you might see when a truck or a bus pulls away from a stop sign, Imagine children walking by that twice a day or even being inside a bus where that kind of emission perhaps is inside the bus. That was really the driver for us to create a cleaner school bus. And so we fuel these buses with propane, and the emissions are virtually zero. It's a much cleaner, quieter environment for the children to be in all day. I used to hate that big uh, that big black puff that you talked about that would come out of the tailpipe of the school bus. I used to purposely kind of stay away from the back of the bus because I was afraid that it was, this something was going to happen when I walked by there. But uh, listen, if it's helping out the environment and it's a safer thing and a cleaner thing, you, you got to be all for it. Uh, but me looking at things practically, uh, like I normally do, Tucker, uh, is this, well, what about now the operating expenses for the buses? Is it kind of a wash with something like this? Well, I love your question because that actually may be the best part. Uh, the operating costs are often 30 to 50 percent less than the cost of a diesel. Even better. So you get these, you get these cleaner buses, you get these quieter buses. And Boston, for example, says when they, mi- when they migrated to propane school buses, they save in their fleet $1,000 a day. I like it what Omaha said. They said when we migrated to propane school buses, we saved enough money to hire five more teachers. Wow. So not only do you get cleaner, not only do you get quieter, but you have significant savings, and that, that money is really important to a school system. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, talk about how propane fix, uh, it fits in the energy mix uh, here in the, uh, in the United States, uh, Tucker. Uh, when it comes to all the energy choices that are out there, uh, talk, yeah, about think- the, talk about the prevalence of propane. You guys are a player in, uh, in energy in, in, in multiple ways, right? Yeah, I think most people think of propane as the fuel in their backyard grill, and perhaps aren't even aware that millions of homeowners use it every day to heat their house, cook their food, uh, have hot water for their showers. Millions of farms use it. Uh, I'm talking today about relatively new applications in transportation. You may be surprised to realize this morning over 200,000 vehicles are operating in and around the U.S. on propane. And the reason they've all done it is the same reason we're talking about for school buses. They're cleaner, much cleaner, particularly if we're talking about greenhouse gases and all those emissions that are so prevalent today to have a cleaner America. They're quieter, and they cost less. And it, whether, whether you're a UPS or you're a school system, having something that's cleaner and quieter but cheaper is a great point for you as a company or a municipality. Yep, no question about it. And I just uh, got a new Blue Rhino tank uh, for the Weber Grill uh, a couple days ago, Tucker. So uh, <laughs> I'm a proud consumer of propane myself, and I just love this uh, this application for it here. How does it get started, Tucker? Who makes the decision if someone says, okay, I like this idea of propane buses? 
Is it various boards of educations? Is it a, a state level decision? Does it depend upon where you live? Who makes the decision about going from diesel to propane? Well, most states have already weighed in and says, you know, we'll say that propane school buses certainly meet all the criteria of the state. So it really becomes more of a local decision where the school superintendent, the school board, and the fleet manager come together to make a decision. What we really love is when parents begin to get involved and talk to the PTA, talk to the school board, or call their direct superintendent and say, you know, what is the research you're doing about migrating our buses from diesel to propane? Because that seems like something that's good for my child, good for my school, good for my community. And so we created a website just to educate parents on that exact topic. The website's called Better Our Buses. And it's the first place I think a parent should go to learn more and really begin to be able to engage with the superintendent on having cleaner, quieter, and cheaper buses. Nice. Educate me a little bit, Tucker, because uh, I can remember being a little kid and my sister had a diesel car, and in the wintertime you had to plug it in or you had to keep it warm or something, or something had to be added to the fuel or else you had problems starting the vehicle the following morning. You don't have any of those issues with these propane vehicles, do you? That's one of the reasons that propane buses seem to be so uh, cost-advantaged over diesel buses, because diesel buses struggle on those cold winter mornings to not only start, but then to get up to temperature so it makes it comfortable for the students. A great savings, all of these propane buses behave so well in cold weather. They start easily, they start quickly, they get up to temperature, and that's one of the things that bus mechanics talk to us about as one of their favorite features about a propane-powered school bus is how easily they start, how quickly they get to warm temperatures for the students that are about to ride on them. I can see why they like it so much as well. Uh, As we wrap up, Tucker, where can someone go to get some more information uh, about what we talked about today? The website is betterourbuses.com. Excellent. Tucker Perkins, President and CEO, Propane Education and Research Council. Thank you for the time this morning, and uh, we're all about keeping New Jersey uh, school kids as safe as possible. And This sounds like something that we could uh, could definitely use here in Jersey to, to make that happen. So have a great weekend. Thanks for the time this morning, all right? Bert, thanks so much. Anytime. Thank you. All right, Tucker Perkins, my guest.